Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to scrape an economic calendar. So you can use it to set up reminders or you can use it to avoid these trading days. So what I have written in the script is a function to get the economic calendar. There's no parameters, so you can just call it and it should return the current week with all events. I'll show you guys what that table looks like. I'm gonna run lines one through 91 and we'll take a look at that table. We have a total of over 200 different entries. That includes seven columns, and we have a timestamp converted to local time, the country, the overall sentiment, the report, or the release that's taking place. If it's in the past, you will see a number for the actual, which is the actual number, the forecasted number, and then it also returns the previous number. And then by using this table, we can subset to the most important events. So we'll take a look at the sentiment that expects really high volatility. And we'll look at the console. So this is a subset from the main table. We see that all of these events really high importance to the markets. And it looks like we have three coming up on Friday. Now, in order to get this to work, you will need to do some digging to find a specific value that we need to plug in into this function. So I'll go ahead and show you how to get that. So I'll go ahead and minimize this and we're going to open up this function. So the value that we need is this cookie. I'm not able to get it interactively. All other headers can remain the same. In order to get this cookie value, we're gonna visit that page. So here in Firefox, we're gonna open up this web page for the economic calendar. And once you're here, we're gonna right click and click on inspect. And we're gonna to go to network. Once you're on network, we're gonna go ahead and refresh this page. Let it load up. You can apply some filtering if you want to. Here we'll set my current time zone to the appropriate value. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on pause. We're gonna maximize this. So the domain we're looking for is econcal.forexpros tools. So I believe it might be this one. And we're gonna sort by domain. So the appropriate link we're looking for is the one with the features that equals date picker. Now from here, we're gonna focus on the request headers and we're gonna right click on copy value for the cookie. And then we're gonna go back to our script and we're gonna go ahead and replace that value. And you only need to do this once and you will leave the rest of the function unchanged. You will have to do some digging if you wanna change the calendar type. I'm not sure if replacing week by month would get you the full month worth of economic data. But for now, the script will return the given week. All right, so the function will send a get request return the contents into this page two. We're gonna extract all the content from that page and it does not return a table. So I had to manually search for the nodes by passing in section. And within that section is where all of our values are at. So we extract the time, the sentiment, the country, the report, and also the actual consensus and previous by searching for these nodes and extracting the attributes for most of these. For the report, it looks like we extracted the text and also for the ACP. Once we extract those, we can go ahead and convert our ACP to a data frame. Since this is returned as a text, we need to split it into three columns. So lines 32 through 40 take care of that. Now there are some events that don't return the actual previous and forecast because these events are just holidays perhaps or certain events going on with the country. So for row 24 and 25, we see that there's no actual forecast or previous. It's just an indication that the markets closed early in this case. And for Canada, it looks like they took a day off. So the lengths will differ. And the way we go about taking care of that is to first put everything into a data frame except for the ACP. So here in line 46, we see that we have merged the time, the country, the sentiment, and the report. We're gonna go ahead and drop the first row, reassign the column names for that data frame. Now for specific holidays, there was a common pattern, and that was that it did not return a current event time. We're gonna go ahead and extract those locations from within the table. And what I did for lines 55 through 64 is for each of those instances that we don't have a date time, we're gonna insert three NAs for each of the columns in actual forecast and previous in between our ACP table in order for us to have the same number of rows in econ cal. And once we have inserted those NAs, we're gonna go ahead and merge our econ cal with the ACP. There's some timestamps that have tentative. 
So we're gonna format those timestamps. Now to set everything to your current time zone, we must first take the time difference between your current time and New York time. So that difference will get added for each of the timestamps in our table. If you're currently using New York time, then this value would return zero. So nothing will get added. And then finally, we just do a bit of formatting for the timestamps such as filling in A's and correcting the timestamps for holiday events. And after everything has been formatted, it will go ahead and return the table that I showed you at the start of the video. And once you load up this function, you can go ahead and test it out. So again, you don't need to insert any parameters. And now you should be able to return the calendar for the given week. Well guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.